When you're fetching objects from core data, you want to be really intentional about which objects you're fetching and which order they come back in. In this video, we're going to learn how to use NSFetch requests with predicates and sort descriptors to control how core data retrieves our objects out of the database. In the previous videos, we set up this budgeting app with this budget and expense object that are getting saved to the database no problem. But when we're querying these objects, we're not really doing it in a meaningful way. We want to make sure that they're ordered in the correct order. We might want to specify some other criteria like maybe only uh, amounts that are greater than zero or something. Uh, and when we have a table view like this, I probably want to limit the amount of objects we're getting to be only the amount that are actually going to be seen on the screen. I don't want to query for a thousand or ten thousand objects if they're not going to be seen. So this is all done through the NS fetch request object. So I'm going to start with the expense object. I'm going to create a fetch request that gets these objects in the right order with the right criteria. So back in my data manager, I'm just going to create a new function uh, and I'm going to call this uh, expenses. And this function is going to be responsible for creating the correct fetch request to get the expenses that I need. So in order to get the expenses, I need to know which budget object uh, I'm getting them for. And then this is always going to return an array of expense objects. So I'm actually going to copy and paste the code from my budgets fetch request function because this is basically the bare minimum of what you need. Uh, you're going to get the fetch request from the uh, NS managed object class. Then you're going to perform that fetch request to get back an array of those objects and then you can return those objects. So uh, let's just call this, uh, I don't know, fetched. Uh, so at a bare minimum, this is what we need, but this is going to get every single expense, uh, which is not what we want. We want to limit which expenses we're actually getting. When we only want to get objects that match a certain criteria, we use the NS predicate object. And this is basically the same as a where clause in a SQL statement. Uh, it's basically saying only get me objects that meet this criteria. So uh, you can create an NS predicate and one of the most common ways is just uh, with the format string. So here we can pass in properties of the expense object in this case uh, and say that they have to match some sort of criteria. So uh, for example, the expense has an amount property, right? That's the amount that's been spent. So I could say, well, the amount has to be greater than, I don't know, 10 maybe, right? And that's my criteria. Or I can say it's... Uh, equal to 10, actually, it's single equal. I'm not going to go over everything that you can put inside of an NS predicate format string, but I will leave more details in the description if you want to know more about that. So I don't really want to limit uh, based on the amount. Actually, I could. I, I guess I could say only get me expenses that are greater than zero. I don't care about uh, expenses that are zero. Uh, and then I can join this with another one. So I can say only get me expenses that are greater than zero. And um, I want the expenses where the budget is equal to this budget object. Uh, so I can't just pass in the budget here. Instead, I have to use a format specifier, so that's just percent at, and that means uh, make sure that the budget property on the expense object is equal to another object, and then I can just pass in that object uh, after the string separated with a comma. Um, so these can be much more complex than this, but at a basic level, this is just the criteria that has to be met in order to get an expense. Uh, so then I just have to set that on the fetch request. So I get this request object. I'm going to say that the predicate is equal to that NS predicate object. And again, Xcode is giving me these fake warnings, but I can see that my application still builds successfully. So I just don't care about those warnings right now. It's just Xcode being Xcode. So once I've restricted which objects are coming back based on some sort of criteria with the predicate, I want to make sure that they're coming back in the right order. I don't want to just want to get my expenses in any random order. I actually want them to be the newest expense on top and the oldest expense on the bottom. So if I created one yesterday and one today, the one from yesterday should be lower down on the table view. Uh, so to order our objects, we use something called an NS sort descriptor. And the simplest version of the constructor for this object is just to use a key and uh, specify whether it's ascending or descending. So if I want to say uh, that it's sorted by its timestamp, I can just pass in timestamp here. 
Uh, and then do I want it to be ascending or descending? So ascending would mean that I have the lowest on top and the highest on the bottom, or descending would be the opposite of that, highest on top and lowest on bottom. And when we're dealing with dates, uh, the highest value, like the most recent date to be on top would be in descending order. So I'm gonna put in false here. And I can create many of these sort descriptors. I could say, all right, so first sort by timestamp. And if I have two budgets that are the exact same timestamp, maybe order them by uh, the name of the budget or the amount of the budget. Um, in fact, I could just create a sort of descriptor that's you know, based on amount, right? I want to see the, the most expensive thing on top and the least expensive thing on the bottom. But right now, I'm just going to go with timestamp. Uh, and then, like I said, you can create as many of these as you want. And then you just set them on the request. So request.sort descriptors, descriptors. Uh, and that's going to be an array. So I'm just going to pass in uh, an array that only contains the single sort descriptor because I just want it to be sorted like this. And there's one more thing that I might do when I'm creating a fetch request, and that's actually set a limit. So, uh, you know, imagine I have thousands of these expenses here. I don't want to load them all into memory if I'm only going to present like 10 in a table view. So on the request object, again, we can set the uh, fetch limit, let's say to be 10. And then we're only going to get 10 objects back. And we can use this to paginate through the different uh, expenses here by using the limit and the fetch offset. And I'm not going into too much detail about all this stuff here. I'm actually going to remove this because I don't need it for my request. But I am going to leave much more information in the description. So if you want to check out all of these things in more detail, just check the description. But at a bare minimum, when you create a fetch request, you'll most likely want to include a predicate and you'll definitely want to include a sort descriptor because without this, you're not really going to know how the objects are going to be ordered and you want to have control over how they're coming back to you. So uh, with this in place, I'm going to go back to the expense view controller. And instead of using that expenses property on the budget object, I am going to get all of the expenses from the data manager using that method that was just created. So uh, let's go expenses, uh, data manager shared expenses, uh, and we'll pass in that budget. So given this budget, get me all of those expenses and order them correctly. Uh, and then I'll reload the table view. So, Currently milk is on top and cereal is on bottom, but I actually created milk first and then cereal later. And let's just create another expense here for fun. Uh, let's go orange juice. I don't know how much orange juice is, $4. Save that and orange juice comes on the bottom. So with this in place, we should actually see them ordered uh, in the reverse order. So orange juice should be on top because it's the newest expense. So now if I rerun this using my fetch request, Go to food, there we go, orange juice, cereal, milk. So it actually orders it in the correct way. And it's only getting expenses uh, for this budget, uh, not any other budget. So if I created a transit expense, I don't know, uh, let's say I um, take an Uber and that costs, what, like $30. Uh, there we go, that appears here. But if I go back to food, that doesn't appear. So it is using that uh, predicate to make sure it only gets ones for this budget and it's ordering it in the correct order. So this is really handy because we always wanna take control of how we're fetching the data from core data. That's it for this video. But like I said, I'll leave more details in the description, but at a bare minimum, you wanna create your fetch request with a sort descriptor and most likely you'll end up using a predicate at some point. So play around with the code examples here and stay tuned for more videos on iOS development. Thank you.